happy Friday, guys. It is a very cold Friday here in Michigan. In fact, Eric did not have school today because of the cold. I think we were 30 below zero this morning. So today is a great day to can because for those of you who pressure can, you know that um, when you run a pressure canner in your house, it adds a lot of heat and a lot of moisture to the air, a lot of humidity. So today is a perfect day to can. And what I am canning today, I'm going through a five pound bag of white navy beans right now. And I'm gonna pick out any rocks that I see or any ugly, um, any ugly beans that I don't like. So I'm gonna sort through these and then I'm gonna give them a really good wash. I, I am loading them right now in a strainer. Hopefully you guys can see this one, the screen flipped up. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm in, I'm in focus here. And um, so we are going to make maple beans today. And I'm going to be following a recipe from my girlfriend Tina over at Wilhelm's Kitchen. Um, I will be changing up her recipe just a little because her recipe is very close to my almost sweet baby ring barbecue sauce. And I don't want her a recipe calls for barbecue sauce and I don't want to use bottled sauce. So I'm going to go ahead and make my barbecue sauce. I'm going to make a double batch of it. And then I will doctor it up um, by adding the maple syrup um, to it and um, some other extras like balsamic vinegar that she adds to hers and so forth. So it's going to be very similar but a bit different and um, I just want to make sure there's no buckley. You know every time I buy beans at GFS they're always so beautiful. I buy them from Kroger and I always get such ugly beans but GFS for whatever reason their dried beans are are always just so beautiful and I've never found a rock in them. Once in a while I'll find like an ugly skin that I'll pick out but for the most part they're always beautiful. So all right so I'm not going to bore you with this part. I'm going to keep sorting and then I'm going to wash these really well under cold water several times and um and then i will be back and we'll get to making the sauce okay, just for the sake of full disclosure <laughs> just so i don't skip any steps because i know a lot of people out there that watch me are new to canning um i always wash my jars now you do not have to sterilize jars when you're pressure can so only when you um only when you are water bath canning but I still wash my jars each and every time. I wash them before they go on my pantry shelf and then I wash them again right before canning just because you can never be too clean with canning jars, I don't think. So I'm going to wash these up and get these ready. I also put my lids, even the new lids, the new um, ball lids, I put them, thank you baby, um, they, I put them in um, hot water. They just work better for me and I do not experience any fails. The one time I did not soak them just to test them out, I had several failures. So I'm just old school and I put my lids and my rings in very hot water and I let them soak at least five, 10 minutes or so before I get to canning. So I'm doing quite and a half size jars because that's just the perfect size for my family. Um, but we will be processing them as if they were quarts because that's what you do. All right, I'm gonna spin you around and we are going to get to making um, the maple bean sauce. I'm also going to start this video off. <laughs> Have you balanced on? One of my French La Parfait jars. All right, so um, starting off, this is not an approved recipe. This is Christina's recipe, <laughs> but I've taken a look at it and um, and I think it is completely safe to can. So you do your own homework, your own research, but this is a Rebel canning recipe, okay? 
we are gonna start off by adding two and a half cups of ketchup into a 12 quart stock pot. Okay, this also calls for, <laughs> things are falling off the jar, um, two cups of brown sugar. All right, now I make my own homemade brown sugar, as many of you know. I'll leave a link up above in a card how I do that. So there's two cups of brown sugar. Okay, then we're also gonna be adding a cup of molasses to this. Okay, I'll just pour that into my measuring cup here. Now you're gonna hear my mixer in the background because I had to make more homemade brown sugar. <laughs> so that is also going on behind the scenes. So there we have it with that. We're also gonna add I'm gonna add a little extra because I really like it. I'm gonna add about three quarters of a cup of apple cider vinegar. This is organic with the mother, so make sure you shake it really well so you get part of the mother in there. And we will dump that in. Oh, I love apple cider vinegar so much. And honestly, I only have a little bit more left, so I'm just gonna finish off the bottle. So that's about another quarter cup, I would say. So. There you have it, a cup of uh, apple cider vinegar. Then we're gonna add about a tablespoon of, what is it? Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce? I don't know, about a tablespoon. So there we have it with that. Okay, now I'm gonna add a tablespoon of ground mustard. You can, um, you can use uh, liquid if you want. Ground is a little stronger though, so just be aware of that. It's a double. So add two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> and I'm gonna be adding another tablespoon of ground mustard to this. Let me grab that back down. Yay! <laughs> Nina is dancing and singing around me. <laughs> I'm gonna be adding uh, about two tablespoons of smoked paprika. Give or take, you know, I'm not very good at measuring. I usually just throw all this stuff in. All right, I'm gonna add a teaspoon, a heaping teaspoon of onion, granulated onion. You can use onion powder too if you have it. And another heaping teaspoon of granulated garlic to this. I'm gonna be adding a half a teaspoon of chili powder to this. Since I'm canning this, I'm gonna be adding canning salt to mine. So, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon, maybe a smidgen less of canning salt, and about a tablespoon of black pepper. Okay, now we're gonna add the maple syrup. This is the maple syrup that I'm using. I got this at Aldi's. Um, Tina calls for three cups of it. I don't know if there's three cups in this jar, so we will find out together how much is in here. Get the seal peeled off. How much we have, and it looks like we have just under two cups here all right so we're just gonna roll with that all right we're gonna roll with that but if you want to do it properly go ahead and you're gonna you're gonna want to get it either a big bottle or if you go to all these you're gonna want two of those jars of maple syrup real authentic maple syrup all right all right and then to this she calls for let me see where my jars are 12 cups of water. And I am going to use onion stock because onion stock is pretty much my favorite thing that I have canned. I love it so much. Oh, it just smells so good. All right, so I'm going to be adding four <laughs> quarts. Sorry, <laughs> my house is just naturally loud. I'm gonna of onion stock to this. Now, if you don't have onion stock, 
and you can treat yourself and make some onion stock and can some up. I swear I use it in place of water all the time. I used it in place of water last night for cuddle soup. And Matt was like, this is so full of flavor. What did you do that's different? I said I used onion, <laughs> onion stock instead of using water. <laughs> so um, it just adds so much flavor. So there we have it. Now, I was short um, on that syrup. So, I might just add, I might just go ahead and add just a cup and a half of water to this, just so that I have enough liquid. I don't want to open up a whole another quart of onion stock just for a cup. All right, so there we have it. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on, on the heat. And I'm gonna bring this up to a boil, and when, oh, I'm losing focus for you. Sorry about that. When this comes up to a boil, I'm gonna taste it, and then from there, I'm going to adjust it. So anything extra that I think it needs as I tweak it, I will bring you back, and I'll let you know what I added to it. Um, but for now, I'm going to just bring this to a boil, and um, and then we'll, we'll taste test it. I did forget to add a little bit of balsamic vinegar. I'm using the Lalo because Tina said it makes, she just likes the kick. So I'm probably adding about, I would say a quarter cup to that. And uh, we're gonna taste that out and try it. I've never tried balsamic vinegar in anything quite like this. So she says she loves it. She says it's also not for everyone, but I do love balsamic vinegar. So we're gonna try it. Why not? All right. Get this up to a boil. We'll give it a taste and I'll tweak it as we go so it's here. coming up to a boil. I gave it a taste and I'm gonna add just what I have here, a half cupper. I'm gonna add just, nope, I got a quarter cupper. I'm gonna add another half cup of brown sugar to this. And I think that is going to just sweeten it up a little bit more. Um, my family likes sweet beans. Um, and this, this is really, really good. I just think they'll like it a little more sweet than they will uh, spicy. So, as in Sweet Baby Ray flavor. <laughs> so, let's try that. And we'll see how that goes. All right, let's give this a taste here. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Mmm. Definitely has a little heat to it, like a barbecue, but you definitely, definitely can taste the maple in it. I wish I had the other cup of maple syrup. So I would say if you're gonna give this a try, try the three cups of maple syrup. I think I think just having more, a little bit more of that maple flavor would be incredible, incredible. So keep that in mind when you make this, if you make it, if not, you're just hanging out with me, following along. Let's see what we come up with. <laughs> see what the outcome is. All right, guys, I'm going to let this come to a full boil. Then I'm going to take this off the heat. I'm going to go wash my jars right now and get those set up and ready. Get a, I'm going to get my canner out, get that set up and ready, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. All right, here we go. All right, so in each jar, I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of um, dried 
minced onion. If I had some uh, dehydrated my own, you know, my own, I would use that. But I don't, so I'm going to use this lovely can stuff, jar stuff, I guess you would say. I'm just going to throw one half teaspoon in each jar just for a little added extra onion because I love onion. All right. And then let me get my funnel. I'm using the no soak method again, <laughs> not an approved method. So do your research, but I prefer this method because it just turns out better. And I've had no issues and every single person that I know that cans dried beans does it this way. So this is a half a cup. Now I'm using a pint and a half jars, but I'm using a half a cup in each jar. of dried beans, no soap method, all right? And then we're gonna start with our liquid here, okay? The liquid that's been brought to a boil. Taste it, make sure you like it, because that's the time to tweak it. And my washer singing to me. I'm gonna fill these jars up. to one inch head space. Right. And if I don't have enough sauce to do all eight, I will just put plain water um, in the jars that I can't fill. Okay guys, that gave me, let me take you off my jar here. <laughs> that gave me eight pint and a half jars. And as you see, I just have a little bit of juice left. Not much, I'm right to the bottom, but plenty to spare. All right, I don't think I need to put you on the jar. I don't think, let's see if we can get you just to stand on your own. All right. All right, there we go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and with my pokey, I'm gonna go ahead and debubble these because when you add liquid to that, to anything dry like that, anything chunky, you're gonna get air pockets. So you wanna make sure that all the bubbles are out of your jar. Burp them nicely. smell incredible that's all I can say they smell incredible all right then when all of that is done I'm gonna get out a little I get a little ramekin out and I'm going to put some vinegar, straight vinegar. I don't mix mine with water. I just use straight vinegar and I fill my ramekin up all the way. And then what I don't use, I throw in my canner uh, because I'm on city water. So I have a bit of hard water. So it helps keep my jars nice and clean when they come out of the canner. So I'm just going to go ahead and 
See? Or dip a napkin, clean napkin. And I'm going to go ahead, clean off that rim, and then we're going to get a lid and a ring. It's been sitting in hot water, fingertip tight, and let's see if I can show you this. Look at how beautiful that is. All right, in the canner it goes. And we'll get the rest of these done now. is to fill it between two and three inches of water when you can. Um, I do three inches when I'm doing a long process like this, beans, meats, anything like that. On something short where I'm only processing for say 30 minutes, say for stock or something like that, I usually do about two inches, sometimes two and a half, between two and three inches of water. That is before you add the jars, not after, okay? You wanna make sure that this canner does not run dry on you when you're processing this for 90 minutes, which is what we're gonna do with these, okay? So over here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my vinegar, and I'm gonna just go ahead and add it right to my water. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on. This um, I added hot water to this because I was using hot, boiling liquid um, in these beans so you want to make sure that you kind of temper your um, your jars a bit uh, you don't want to put them in cold water <laughs> okay okay so hot 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 jars hot water cold jars cold water all right so you don't shock them no thermal no thermal shock wanted here <laughs> all right let me put the uh, lid on and let's get rocking and rolling an all-american you want to make sure that your canner is prepped um, meaning everything is lubricated so that your um, your jar your lid does not stick to your canner when it comes time to take it off and let me get you guys aimed up just a little bit more all right there we go and I think you are focused all right 
so now what I do, what I do, my little trick for my All-American to make sure that my lid is, I'm sure you're seeing this, um, make, making sure my lid is not um, higher on one side than it is on the other. I just go around with my debubbler and I want to make sure that I can run my debubbler under each one. It's very important on an All-American that you get your lid as straight as you can. Helps with a better seal, helps with a better run. All right, so there we go. Now, on an All-American, you're gonna do opposite sides. You're just gonna put them up there loosely. You're not gonna tie them, tight them, you know, tighten them down. You're just gonna, opposite ends. This guarantees that your lid's gonna stay nice and straight, okay? So once you get them all up, then you're gonna crank them down, crank them, crank them, crank. Crank, crank until you can't get them cranked any more, okay? And that is it. So now we are ready to go. All right, I'm gonna turn this bad boy on. And I leave it on a medium high. Let this come up to pressure. Once this comes up to pressure, this will vent out of the pit cock right here. Once this vents, a nice steady stream. We don't want little pss, 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 little pips of steam. We want a steady stream. That is when we begin the 10 minute countdown to actually vent our canner. This is important and this is why we use stovetop canners and not those electric pressure canner cookers because they don't vent. This is an extremely important process to do. You cannot skip it. That 10 minutes where that steam is coming out and flowing strong and steady, it's taking all the air up out of our canner and making this all hot steam, okay? And that is gonna guarantee that we have the right temperature in our jars for the food to kill all the microorganisms that we need to kill to make this shelf stable. All right, so this is extremely important. I can't stress that enough. Electric pressure cooker canners do not do this, all right? Making it very dangerous, all right? So we're going to uh, let this come to steam. When this uh, starts venting and it's venting nice and strong, I'll bring you back and I'll show you what that looks like just so you know. And uh, then we'll begin our countdown for 10 minutes. Then we're gonna put our weight on. We're gonna bring this up to 10 pounds of pressure. My canner likes to sit at 11 pounds. Um, and then once it hits to pressure, we will kind of steady out the heat and we will actually process this then for 90 minutes. All right, and then once it's processed, 90 minutes is up, we'll turn off the heat. We don't touch anything else. We let it come down off of pressure at its own time. Again, extremely important step not to rush. You don't want to rush the heating up and you don't want to rush the cooling down because every minute counts when it comes to canning um, to killing those microorganisms, okay? All right, guys, I'll be back once this baby starts steaming it. So I'm gonna try to show this, <laughs> the lighting is so hard, but you see that? That's a nice steady stream, all right? So from this point on, and as you can see, if you look over at my gauge, the pressure is already climbing, all right? So now we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna set the timer for 10 minutes. And we are gonna let this vent for 10 minutes and make sure all of that air uh, leaves our canner and um, and it gets pressurized properly, okay? All right, we'll see you back here in 10 minutes and we'll put the weight So on. then, after 10 minutes is up, we're gonna go ahead. I, um, at least on an All-American, you have, uh, you have, your weights right here. I use the 10 pound pressure. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that on. And then we're gonna wait until this starts jiggling. Once it starts jiggling, I'll play with the weight. I'll get it down to 
the sweet spot uh, on my stove top to um, can this and um, we'll be ready to process this for one hour and 30 minutes, 90 minutes. And that is for pint and a half or quarts. All right, okay, I'll bring you back when this starts okay. to jiggle. We're starting to jiggle. Now I'm gonna turn down my canner and over here, we are going to start this for an hour and a half. All right, I'll be back in an hour and a half. We'll shut this off. Well, I guess I won't be back in an hour and a half. I'll be back in more like two hours. Because once, um, I gotta get this, this thing properly now. All right. Once, um, hour and a half is done, I will shut off my canner. I'll let it come down off of pressure. And then once I remove my jars from the canner, I'll bring you guys back and I'll show you what the jars look like. All right. See you in about two hours. All right. I've got 18 minutes left on the timer and I'm going to put my marrow fat piece in oh, two rings on here, two ribs on here. Oh, there we go. Alright, so <laughs> we're going to seal this vacuum sealer. I'll leave a link down below. I got this on Amazon. So, go ahead, put the regular mouth on there, and then, and then the sealer on there. All right. Put a little button right there. Ready to go up with my dehydrated goodies. Yay! Pretty in a drawer. Pretty in a drawer. And there they will fit. All with my other dehydrated goodies. Yay. All right, guys. Well, it is going on eight o'clock at night, and my canner just came off of pressure. So we are going to open this up slowly, slowly, slowly. And then what I like to do sometimes on a long session like that, I just like to crack it open and just let it vent just a little bit before I pull them out just because it's so cold. I mean, we're right now at 21 below zero with the wind chill. Um, and even with the furnace cranking and my kitchen is heated up though. It's it's been real nice running this canner um, I'm still don't want to uh, shock my jars. So I'm just gonna let that crack for about five minutes I'm gonna change your battery because you're blinking at me and uh, make you feel all better and charged and um, I will be back when I pull these babies out of the canner All right, <laughs> all right let's pull these babies out, huh? Alright. Jar number one. I'm gonna see how it how it reacts to the cold. Being out in the cold. I don't want it bubbling too much. It's okay to bubble a little bit. I don't want it bubbling too much though. Playing blocks. <laughs> These look beautiful. <laughs> they smell beautiful. You can definitely smell. It smells like a sweet baked bean. Oh, fantastic. 
Somebody did make a mention about how I lift my jars out of the canner. I lift them straight up. I do not tilt them to get the water off. The water from the heat will come off by itself for the most part. If it doesn't, that's fine. Just leave it. But lift them straight up because you don't want anything messing with your seals. No food getting under those seals. Look at that. Oh my gosh. What a beautiful sight. Check this out. Perfect head space on every single one. I told you guys I have a competition with myself <laughs> on whether or not I can keep one inch head space. And they are still bubbling and boiling away. Oh, and they're starting to ping. Beautiful, 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 beautiful beans. I am so excited. Let me know if you guys give this recipe a try. I'm going to be linking Tina's video up above in a card for you. So you guys can check out the original recipe. And um, I can't wait to open up a jar of these. Now I've got eight beautiful jars for my pantry. I want to open up a jar and heat it up, pour it over toast and have baked beans on toast with maybe a hard boiled egg on the side. <sighs> so good, so good. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me as I canned maple beans for the first time. I have a feeling they're going to be my favorite. You hear those pings? <sighs> hear those pings? They are sealing up. A beautiful sound. All right. And with that, now I'm going to let these sit overnight. I'm just going to let them chill out here. And then in the morning, I will take the rings off and um, wash them out up in very hot, soapy water with some vinegar. And then dry them off, label them, and in my pantry, they will go. Take a look at that. And they are all pinging away. I'm so happy. <laughs> all right, guys. I will be seeing you later. I'm, I've got, I've got more beans to can. These are going to be plain though. I'm just going to can that with some salt, and uh, that way I can use it for chilies. I can use it for soups. Um, the, that Moroccan soup that I want to make, I'm going to put some of these beans in. So I've got to can those. Those are going to be tomorrow. Cause it's supposed to be cold tomorrow too. All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me. Okay, I wanted to show you guys inside my canner. I have, oh, probably, um, I would say maybe an inch, if I'm lucky, of water left. That's why it's important to, for me to put three inches of water in when I get started. Oh, it's still hot. Um, and you see that it's perfectly clear. So I didn't have any evacuation. Um, and that really is just, it's taken me a long time to learn how to control my canner and control my my whole canning process to where I don't lose any product. Um, sometimes you do, sometimes you can't help it, but usually it's a it's a it's a slow start, it's a slow stop, and it's controlling the um, the pressure the entire time, making sure that your canner isn't running too high. So um, there you have it. So that's a look at them now that they're cooling down. That one's still bubbling a bit. As you see, it's all still in the one inch head space. And clean water. <laughs> That's what I call a perfect canning session. <laughs> all right, guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, let me know if there's something else you want to see me can. Um, but other than that, I will say I will see you later. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye.